I've been using the Einstar Vega for my automotive projects for about the last eight months, so it's about time to do a long-term update. If you haven't seen it, go check out my initial review and I'll link to that in the description. That might help fill in some blanks and add some more context to some of the stuff we're gonna talk about today. If you're new to this channel, my only use case for 3D scanning is to scan cars and car parts in order to make more car parts. This means that if you're interested in how this thing scans people or miniature figurines, stuff like that, it is probably not gonna be of much use to you, but the algorithm has your click, so thanks for that anyway. What I'm gonna try to do in this video is go over some of the scans that I've made over those past eight months, as well as include some footage of me actually making the scan itself so you can get an idea of what the working distance is to the object as well as take a look at the resulting part from those scans. Now going back to my initial review the takeaway was this thing was pretty good but with all the firmware updates that Shining 3D has released over those past eight months this has gone from pretty good to really great. At the time I wasn't ready to give up my classic Einstar as that was kind of the benchmark that I was using up until that point but a few months ago I ended up selling that because the Vega has been able to completely replace that from my workflow. One of the enablers that did bring this from good to great is the fairly constant firmware updates that Shining 3D is releasing. It's not uncommon that if I don't use this thing for a week or two that once it's connected to the internet it will say that hey you've got a new firmware update and generally speaking every time there's been a noticeable improvement in the performance. One of the biggest improvements for me was the 100 millimeter gap in range between the fast mode and the HD mode was fixed so now in the fast mode you can get a little bit closer to the object. You kind of had to be an uncomfortable distance away from the part in order to get it to scan correctly, but now you can get a little bit closer and I feel like the details improved a little bit as well. At this point there's probably plenty of videos out there on how to actually use this thing, but whenever I scan something I always set it to the highest resolution, collect as much data as I can, and then that way if I want to dump it down later in the software I can just mesh it at a lower resolution to make it play a little bit nicer in Fusion 360. Even when I select that very high point cloud resolution I never really encounter any sort of lag or issues with the software on the device itself. Speaking of which, I don't think I've ever had the device crash or had the StarVision software on the PC crash either. This kind of makes a lot of sense because the developers are able to optimize for a single set of hardware rather than on something like the Einstar where they're trying to make it cross compatible with whatever hardware anybody's trying to scan on their laptop. So that kind of eliminates the argument of, well, it works on my machine, bro. Well, this has evolved into a really great piece of hardware. It's not perfect and no tool is. One of my biggest gripes with the scanner is when it comes to working with the files on a PC is that it's not compatible with the XStar software which the Einstar Classic scanner uses. It uses its own standalone version called StarVision which is kind of like a lightweight version of the interface that you would use on the scanner itself. This means that my favorite feature in the XStar software, the 321 alignment feature to quickly align your scans to a coordinate plane is not present on here. When the scanner was first released, there was no means on the scanner or in the StarVision software to align the scans to a coordinate plane, but they have since added a feature to do that, but it allows for freeform movement rather than to define a specific plane. So it'll get you in the ballpark, but if you're using it for engineering purposes, then it's not gonna be ideal. I had actually reached out to Shining 3D to see if they had an official statement on this, and their mindset behind having a standalone software for the Vega was to have a lightweight software that was gonna run on basically any PC and be a familiar interface from what they feature on the scanner itself. I completely get it, but they did admit that any future Einstar products are going to be compatible with XStars. But they did say they're gonna add the 321 feature to this, so that's gonna be good enough for anything that I use this thing for. One area where Shining 3D can take a lesson from Creality would be in the product presentation. The Vega comes in this kind of soft case thing that has sat on the shelf uh, ever since it arrived, whereas a product from Creality at a comparable price point comes in this hard shell case. Not the end of the world because Harbor Freight sells an affordable case. Uh, this one is the Apache 4800. With the pull apart foam, you can fit everything you need for a nice tidy mobile scanning setup, power supply, the requisite A sub scan spray that's going to make your life significantly easier no matter what you're scanning, uh, the tripod handle, and of course the scanner itself, and then a uh, pocket for my magnetic markers as well as the standard marker sheets. Uh, isn't really a good place for the calibration panel, so that just sits right above there. 
and get sandwiched between the uh, the top of the case. So it'd be really cool if something like this was provided by Shining 3D, but it is a nice affordable quality of life upgrade if you're going to be taking your scanner out and about. The place where the Vega absolutely excels is in its just sheer convenience and ease of use. I don't know why, but I went into this expecting an all-in-one to be a bit of a toy, but it's really crazy just how simple this thing is to use and how fast it works. If you're coming from a classic Einstar and you're used to it taking maybe multiple hours to mesh a lot of data, this thing will process even the largest scans in less than typically half an hour. The other really impressive thing is how well this thing tracks, uh, particularly even without markers in fast mode. If, if you have anything that has a high number of unique features, it very rarely loses tracking at all. The fact that you can just turn the scanner on, capture the data, not drag your laptop and be tethered to cables is extraordinarily convenient. At this point, I have a couple of years of 3D scanning experience and I wasn't entirely surprised on how quickly I picked up on how to use this thing effectively. The more surprising part to me was I'm working with somebody on a side project and they purchased a Vega to scan some items on their car locally. He's never used the 3D scanner before and the first two scans that he sent me in order to design parts from were absolutely perfect in terms of having the details and the features that I needed to interface with the part that I was designing. Speaking of that side project, the parts that I scanned with my Vega for the project were some BMW S58 turbo manifolds in order to design a flange. Here you can see a perfect use case for HD mode. We captured really great detail with a somewhat bizarre geometry of the exhaust manifold flange. This uses some tapered faces to clamp the manifold into place. You can see all the details from the casting that I was able to capture and all the fairly sharp edges provided a nice reference for doing a mesh section sketch from which to build out the solid model for the flange. You're going to see a lot more about this project in an upcoming video where I will basically take you start to finish of designing a complete 3D printed turbo kit that was designed entirely off of 3D scans and then hopefully be on a car that goes into the mid 7 second quarter mile. It's already done 780s and we're going to try to put this thing a little bit deeper with some higher flowing turbo manifolds. Here was a real quick project where I needed to scan the center console of my i8 so I could design a nice, clean, quick access CAN bus interface for both the car's drivetrain as well as the future standalone aftermarket ECU. This was again done in HD mode. You can see the really great detail it picked up and I was able to very quickly and easily design an insert for the connection point. Next we're gonna do a scan of a BMW i8 subframe. I had actually already designed my engine swap with a third party scan. There were some details missing from that one so I wanted to capture it for myself as well as be able to offer the scan to anybody else that was considering doing a swap in their i8. This was done in fast mode. The prep work here was some ASUB scan spray as well as some larger markers which you can see once I start scanning that the scanner picks them up very quickly. You can also observe how quickly the scanner captures the data on the subframe. This scan as a whole took me about 45 minutes to capture. We were able to do some preliminary post-processing to remove most of the jack stands on the device and then meshed it on the Vega as well. Here we'll take a closer look at the scan. Plenty of resolution to design anything that you're gonna to want to in terms of attachment points for mounting various engines in this subframe. Here's where our mobile scanning setup is gonna come in handy. 
I ended up scanning the front ends of an Audi TTRS in order to design a headlight inlet duct. This was another case of using fast mode to quickly capture a large area of data. I scanned the car in two steps, one without the bumper and then a second scan with the bumper on. Again, use some A sub scan spray as well as some of my magnetic marker dots. The markers weren't really necessary, but they helped align the scans afterward. Here's the work in progress headlight duct. As you can see the form tool is still alive, so I have yet to thicken it and I still need to make some geometry adjustments and then go through and add the mounting brackets. Next up, we're gonna take a look at scanning this item right here, which is the F136 engine made by Ferrari for Maserati, 4.2 liter V8 that makes some pretty fantastic noises. And this is going to be featured in a number of upcoming videos where I'm going to take a little bit of a deeper dive on the CAD side and talk about some of the design stuff. We're going to make a transmission adapter for the 8HP and also design an intake manifold for some drive-by-wire uh, individual throttle bodies. One kind of interesting test that I did for the scan on my F136 motor was to try and scan the entire motor in HD mode. And it was really impressive that I was able to capture as much of the motor as I did. And I actually ended up reaching the maximum frame count that the scanner was able to capture. The interesting part was after it was meshed, the resulting detail and scan quality was less than the same part that was scanned in the fast mode. This actually kind of makes sense because how it was using the HD mode is well outside of its design intent. On the same motor using HD mode for its intended purpose, I have a much smaller area and you can see that it has incredible detail compared to trying to capture that same data for the whole motor. Next, we're gonna properly use the Vega and choose a fast mode to rescan our engine. I'm gonna keep this on a continuous stream of the video sped up 10X. It's gonna give an idea how well this thing tracks as well as the speed at which it collects the data. And then you can also observe the motions that I have to make to get enough data for each section. When we take a look at the finished scan, this is going to be the type of object where the classic Einstar would have yielded probably a higher detailed model. But here you can see you can easily obtain mounting bolt pattern for the intake manifold, have absolutely no problem at all in getting the mounting PCD for the bell housing, or even things like the motor mounts are not going to be a problem. Next, we're gonna do a real-time capture of the intake manifold so we can use this as a height reference, as I do believe that this intake manifold will clear the hood on the car that this is ultimately gonna go in.
in just under three minutes, we've been able to capture both sides of the intake manifold. And because we did this in two sections, we're going to use the StarVision software to align this and then mesh it on the PC. And something here where we have nice overlapping features, the software does a really good job in one click of aligning everything. Here's the resulting mesh of the intake manifold through fast mode. With the same part, we're gonna do a quick comparison of a smaller section in HD mode. We're gonna scan the Maserati logo. Being successful with the scanner is really gonna come down to deciding which mode is gonna be the best use case for whatever object that you're trying to scan and considering what you're gonna to need to get off of it in terms of detail for reverse engineering. And here you can see the significantly better detail that the HD mode will produce. I think that'll just about wrap it up for this video. If you can't tell, I really, really like this thing. If you wanna buy one of your own, I have a referral code in the description with a $50 discount code. So check that out if you're so interested. So if you're in the market for a 3D scanner and have a budget around $2,000, Maybe you don't have a laptop that's powerful enough to run some of the software that's associated with other scanners out there. This thing is a really good bet. It's really easy to use, and I think I'd be pretty happy with it if you scan stuff like cars and car parts like I do. As always, if you made it this far, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.